Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. It's the holiday season and you may find you have a little time to dig into a new book or maybe you're just looking for a good book for gift giving. Well, today we're checking out some bestsellers and we begin with a memoir by Misty Copeland, the first black principal dancer at the American Ballet Theater. It's called The Wind at My Back, Resilience, Grace, and Other Gifts from my mentor, Raven Wilkinson. Hi, Misty, how are you? Thanks for joining us today. Good to have you back. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back. So, of course, Misty, we know you've made history starring in some mesmerizing performances. You faced physical, racial, and emotional challenges all along the way, but you found inspiration and support in a mentor who broke barriers in the ballet world years earlier, and she became the wind at your back. Tell us about Raven Wilkinson. Uh, Raven Wilkinson, you know, th this is a name that more people should know. Um, I've felt, you know, from the time I started dancing as a professional, it was really difficult for me to find uh, that commonality and that connection and understanding when, you know, I was the only black woman at American Ballet Theater for the first decade of my career. So um, it was frustrating learning about Raven so late into my career. I learned of her story in 2011. Um, but at the same time, I feel like it gave me this second wind that I needed to keep striving towards my goal. Raven was the first black uh, dancer at the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo in the 1950. She joined the company in 1955, uh, was promoted to soloist very shortly after that, which is so rare for a black woman, even still today. Um, she went on to dance with the company for seven years before really being run out of, of the, the company because of their time touring through the South. Her life was being threatened by the KKK. Mm. Uh, and uh, she ended up going to Amsterdam and, and having a, a full career there. But her, her name, her story uh, is a part of an incredible history and legacy of black women in ballet. And mm -hmm. our history is just not documented and, and told in, in, in a way that it should be. And I feel that it's my responsibility. You talk um, very eloquently about the barriers that you had to overcome to make it in the ballet world. And tell us more about how Raven helped you uh, on and off the stage as you were going through your challenges. Yeah, it was, it was incredible to uh, connect with Raven. You know, I, I watched a documentary on on the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, which is when where I discovered uh, that Raven even existed. I had no idea there was a black woman in uh, one of the greatest ballet companies, most important companies of the 20th century. Um, and it, you know, finding out uh, that she lived a block away from me <laughs> in New York City on the Upper West Side was unbelievable. And then our, our friendship just blossomed from there. But she was uh, a mentor like none I've ever experienced. You know, I, I have incredible teachers and coaches and, and amazing Black women in my life, but Raven had a way of setting an example just just by leading by sharing stories about her past there was never uh this um in your face uh you know these are the lessons you're going to learn this is what i have to teach you she just had so much integrity and and resilience and grace which is why you know that that's in the title of the book but just by showing the empathy that she could have for the ballet community that wasn't always kind to her, the world that wasn't always kind to her, and, and these lessons that she learned um, from these experiences that she had, uh, it showed me you know, what it is to be a leader and, and to set an example for uh, future generations. So living just one block away from each other in New York, so you obviously were fated to meet Yes. <laughs> so, you know, you talk about uh, some of the challenges that both of you faced, um, and I'm sure that the two of you must have had conversations about what it means to be the first and, mm -hmm. and the price that you have to pay for being a trailblazer. Can you explain more about that? You know, Raven was uh, really, she was proud of um, 
her family and her background. But, you know, first and foremost, she always made it very clear that as black people in America, we are American citizens. And that was that was something that she really was, you know, stood firmly on whenever that was something that was brought up, you know, uh, especially again in the South, as they spent so much time there, when she was often asked, you know, what are you? Where are you from? What is your background? And people were trying to get to the bottom of whether or not she was a black dancer in the company. And the first thing she would always say is, I am an American citizen. So, you know, that was something that she, uh, you know, stood firmly on. And, um, you know, being being the first was something that, uh, you know, was in extremely exciting for her to be able to witness my career. Uh, I, I'm so proud that she was alive and could share in my success, um, seeing my promotions, see, being on the stage with me, which is the cover of the book, uh, being on the stage with me when I performed my very first Swan Lake in New York City, being able to present the flowers to me after my performance. Um, you know, it's a unique position to be in, but she always made it known and made me feel that we deserve to be here just as much as any other person that's been introduced to ballet. You know, Misty, let's let's talk about you for a minute because you are uh, a superstar. We just saw a picture of you uh, in Firebird and some of your other performances. You know, there's a lot of pressure on you from outside influences, aside from the physical and mental toll of dancing and performing. And you've talked about the makeup, the costumes, the, the tights that you uh, have to wear in classical ballet. Explain the impact of conforming uh, to what the ballet world wants uh, on your identity and, and what happened when you spoke up about it. Yeah, it's a it's been a long, you know, standing tradition, I guess you could say, um, within the ballet community, uh, the ballet world that um, black women are not something that uh, this a lot of the classical works have been built for us to be a part of, or at least that's what we're told. Um, you know, there are genres of ballet, uh, one of them being called the the ballet blanc uh, ballets, which translates to white ballets, um, Swan Lake being one of those, Giselle, Le Bayadere, um, and often within those ballets in the second act where all of the dancers are to look uniform uh, and all have the same skin color, all wearing white tutus. And often when a dancer of color is, uh, if they are given the opportunity to even be cast in these works, um, they are told to wear pink tights, uh, which represent the color of the skin that should be on the stage, that that's what they're saying to you, um, as well as having to color your skin in order to blend in with the rest of the dancers. And so, 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 so what happened, Misty, when you spoke out about it and uh, uh, challenged the tradition? Yeah, I mean, there have been many times that I've spoken out about it. Um, well, when it comes to at American Ballet Theater, it's something that I took a stand on and was allowed to stop coloring my skin uh, another color. But in in Europe or in Russia, in a lot of uh, major ballet companies, they still practice blackface um, in some of their full length ballets. And I have taken a stand on social media and called out these companies for you know that we have a responsibility when we are being a, when we are being seen beyond the theater and within the confines of our communities you know now we have ballet is accessible on youtube and in social media and streaming services and so i feel like we have a responsibility when we are representing uh this incredible art form that should be inclusive and um i i got a lot of backlash when i called out the bolshoi ballet for uh continuing to perform in blackface and um uh you know but it's something that is is so important it's, it's, it's so unbelievable important. that even having this conversation in 2022 misty copeland what would we do without you what with um young aspiring um ballet uh, uh people from our community do without you leading the way we thank you so much for being here today to talk to us a little bit about your memoir it's called the wind at my back misty copeland thank you so much
Thank you so much for having me. And some people in Boston had a chance to see you this past week as a featured keynote speaker at the Massachusetts Conference for Women. Channel 5 was one of the media partners for this annual event.